Here's a few other things about naturalism that I think you should know. People like Richard Dawkins or the Amazing Atheist or Thunderfoot, they're, they're basically saying this, um, and I want to kind of make an analogy. They're basically children in a sandbox playing with sand, saying, look at the pretty sand, look how it flows, and that's about it. And that's all they're doing. They look at the world as it is and say, you know, there's a chemical reaction happening, that's how it works, and that's it, and that's all that exists. Well, hey, wonderful, children, children can do that. Not, not very intelligent, if you ask me. I mean, anyone can do that. It takes someone who likes to employ reason and thinking and philosophy to get outside of just what the five senses present to us, which is all these naturalists here on YouTube seem to be capable of doing. They've never employed any critical thinking to try and, again, get outside the box. Okay, so according to this creationist, believing in things for which there is absolutely no evidence for is a, is a good thing. Fantastic fantasy, Batman. Why bore ourselves with the little sandbox of reality when we can expand our remit to the world of comfortable delusional fantasy? I know. Let's believe, for instance, that this creationist is actually a stupidity mirage caused by Jabba the Hutt eating too many psychedelic stupidity frogs who have been gorged on concentrated hallucinogenic stupidity flies, luxuriously soaked in stupidity juices until they were juicy and succulent. After all, why labour your mind with such trivial practicalities as reality when you can simply embark on a flight of fantasy and believe in anything? I'll tell you why. Because it saves lives, because it alleviates suffering, because it makes people's lives better. Point in question, take HIV protease. You are now on the forefront of AIDS research. Inhibiting this enzyme could save tens of thousands, maybe even millions of lives. Designing an inhibitor is contingent on the union of several fields of research involving quantum chemistry, molecular dynamic simulations, biological identification of substrate and insights into possible inhibitors, testing mutant enzymes and of course double-blind clinical trials. So you're called PCS. What do you choose to do? But it's their bias. It's their naturalistic worldview, which we've shown you kind of limited and kind of closed-minded and self-refuting and circular. Okay, so PCS doesn't want to go with all that naturalistic scientific nonsense. What do you want to go for, PCS? This is planet Earth. And that circle there, that's the universe, the natural world. Now, the atheist and the naturalist, you see, they only believe in things inside that circle. They don't want to think about things that exist outside of it. They refuse to believe that anything exists out there. Oh, great solution, PCS. Let's start considering stuff for which there is absolutely no evidence. Maybe AIDS is the misfiring of a cosmic prayer camp. Maybe AIDS is someone outside the universe trying to communicate with us. Maybe those who die of AIDS gain eternal life. And how much closer has any of this idle speculation of thinking outside reality got you to inhibiting HIV protease? And while you are idly fantasizing PCS, people are dying and suffering. How many are you willing to sacrifice for your self-gratificational luxury of idly kicking your feet in the pool of ignorance? We deserve to die. That's what the Bible teaches. Sorry if you don't like that. I would go with the immaculate track record of discovery of scientific naturalism. Quantum and Newtonian mechanics, atomistic understanding, chemical and biochemical knowledge, DNA, cellular and enzymatic activity, Brownian diffusion and statistical thermodynamics, polymer and material science, thermodynamics and semiconductor technology, and so on. These are just a few of the disciplines that have a track record of producing the best HIV protease inhibitors in the world. Like it or not, you live in a civilization that is a monument to these godless scientific principles to which you doubtless already owe your life several times over to. I know I certainly do. You want a society without it? Open a history book, and you'll see what a civilization that embraces the supernatural looks like. Diseases are possession by demons. Crop failures happen when a supernatural being is angry. 
and thunderstorms are where God goes bowling and so on. Now we've seen what a world looks like that accepts supernaturalistic explanations. PCS, you embody what is wrong with religion. Selfishly sucking to the dregs every last drop from the cup of technological boon that scientific understanding has delivered to mankind. You gorge yourself fit to burst on the comforts and sweet fruits laid out on the table of scientific advances. And then with an arrogant laugh, you attack the table of plenty with an axe. So I just want to show you what this new camera can do and tell you a little bit about it. Um, it is portable, so I can take it outside, which I did, and I'll show you some clips. Um, it's got microphone inputs, so I can get some professional quality sound. Uh, I can even make DVDs and Blu-ray discs, which uh, you guys can order. Uh, that's probably something we can do in the future. Uh, I can upload higher quality videos both to YouTube and other sites like Vimeo.com, which can take high definition videos. So there's a lot of things that we can do, uh, things that I'm excited about. So uh, I'm just going to show you some clips in this video uh, of what this camera can do. So Again, thanks Rick uh, for this, this camera. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, I, I just, I'm excited to see what we can do with it. So, this is Venom Fang X in high definition, high definition, high definition. It's, it's their naturalistic worldview, which we've shown you, kind of limited and kind of closed-minded and self-refuting and circular. You set all that scientific naturalism has delivered to you and billions of others as to naught and then claim that the very mechanism that furnished you with a lifestyle that can only be described as paradise compared to those who lived only a few hundred years ago should be abandoned by decree of your personal whim. With a smile on your face you advocate the abandonment of scientific naturalism. How selfish of you sir. With a tune on your heart you gleefully point the path back to the dark ages and encourage people to follow. Promoting a path that leads to needless death and suffering. You are the very epitome of evil. People like Richard Dawkins or the amazing atheist or Thunderfoot, they're, they're basically saying this, um, and I want to kind of make an analogy. They're basically children in a sandbox playing with sand, saying, look at the pretty sand, look how it flows, and that's about it. And that's all they're doing. They look at the world as it is and say, you know, there's a chemical reaction happening, that's how it works, and that's it, and that's all it exists. Well... Hey, wonderful, children, children can do that. Not, not very intelligent, if you ask me. I mean, anyone can do that. And th that's all they're doing. They look at the world as it is and say, you know, there's a chemical reaction happening, that's how it works, and that's it. And that's all it exists. Well, hey, wonderful, children, children can do that. Not, not very intelligent, if you ask me. I mean, anyone can do that. Aren't you going to chuckle? There's nothing to chuckle about.